Hey, welcome everybody. In this video, I wanted to talk about everything that you need to know about Next.js app router. This is based on my personal experience. So let's start with defining what Next.js is for the people that are not familiar with it. So Next.js is a flexible React framework that enables you to build high performance web applications. One of the defining features is the server-side rendering and that makes Next.js great for performance and search engine optimization. It's versatile, supporting both static and highly interactive applications. Some might say that is the Swiss knife of web frameworks. The popularity of the framework comes from its flexibility, great development experience, and strong React ecosystem. Also, they do have a great documentation and they have done a very effective marketing. Now let's speak about when should you use Next.js. Consider a software as a service project with a fast SEO optimized landing page, a dynamic blog page using MDX or payload CMS, and also interactive app at its core utilizing the client side rendering. You could build pretty much anything with Next.js from e commerce stores, corporate websites, dashboards content heavy websites like blog or news websites, documentation websites, and everything in between. At its heart, Next.js is React, but just rendered on the server with a few powerful features. The powerful feature that I'm talking about are the client and server side rendering. Although everything happens on the server with Next.js, the, you have the choice to fetch data on the server and the client. You have server actions, you have React server components, opinionated routing and nested layouts, the ability to build API endpoints within Next.js, you have dynamic HTML streaming and built-in image font and script optimization, which is nice to have. What sets Next.js apart for me is the ecosystem. Note that some of the tools that I'm going to mention right now are not specific to Next.js. You can use them with pretty much any React framework or library out there. Let's start with the React UI libraries. You can use Hero UI or ShotCN. They're kind of like the biggest ones out there. For content management, you can use Payload CMS, WordPress, or Markdown MDX.js. For authentication, you can use AuthJS, BetterAuth. I personally use AuthJS purely because this is what I'm familiar with. For emails, you can use Recent or AWS SES, pretty much any service out there. For database libraries, you can use Prisma and Drizzle. And for the databases, you can pretty much use any database that you wish, like Firebase, MongoDB, Plant, Scale, Convex, AWS, Aurora, and Upstash. Next.js makes it very easy, or basically the databases makes it very easy for you to work with Next.js or all the way around. And uh, for AI tools, I like to use Windsurf, but also Cursor and GitHub Copilot are pretty good. And now let's speak about hosting. When it comes down to hosting, you have many affordable options. You could split them into three categories, uh, server, serverless, or static, but I won't go into detail here, which one is which and why which one is better than the other. So some of the options include obviously the cell. You can also self-host on any virtual private server. There are many methods of doing that, like you can use Docker or PM2. You can use digital ocean app platform, which is a Node.js based one. You can use Amplify, you can use Render, you can use Railway, uh, you can use GitHub Pages, you can use Cloudflare, and there is a lot more. I personally use a virtual private server to host all of my projects. It's cheap, flexible, and I like the flexibility to be able to do whatever I like. Let's talk about resources. When it comes down to resources, my go-to is the official documentation, any AI tool like Gemini, ChatGPT, and Cloudy. And YouTube has a lot of great videos uh, for absolutely free that you can go to and learn from. Also, I do want to mention that most of the AI tools are now up to date, which makes the development with Next.js even easier if you're just getting started. And lastly, if you're in the lookout for pre-made templates, check out the Vercel free library. They have a lot of options there, which you can download for absolutely free uh, and just play around with them. It would be a good starting point, basically. Now let's dive deep and talk about some of the Next.js misconceptions. Or are there misconceptions? We'll find out. 
Next.js is slow is the first one. I think that this misconception comes mostly from the local development speed, the build speed, and not understanding how to use Next.js, especially the router, which is an issue. It's very easy to make a mistake as a beginner that can lead to your app being slow. And we've seen this all over X quite a lot. And actually we've seen big companies make those mistakes. Let's start with the development mode. It is a fact that Turbo Pack isn't as fast as Vit in development mode. This can make people that are new to Next.js to think that their website is slow, but that is not the case. The local development speed does not equal the build speed. To, to see the real result, you need to run npm run build to build your project and then npm run start to start it. And you'll see the difference. It will be pretty substantial. And also it's not really fair to compare Vit and Turbo Pack directly because Turbo Pack probably has to do a lot more work. Just to be clear, I'm not an expert on build tools. The next misconception is hosting is hard. I see this on X and Reddit all the time. And actually that is true. There is a lot of truth to this. In general, hosting on a Node.js server is as hard as any other framework, I would say. You can put your project in a Docker container or run it with PM2 and your project will be absolutely fine. Some people assume that you have serverless magically appear when you use Next.js, which is not the case. The problem here comes from hosting on a serverless platform or in other platforms rather than the cell in general. When you start looking at serverless platforms, you see that all of them have different implementations, which makes deploying Next.js hard. You have to adjust your application. You have to install extra adapters. You have to change the way your code works. You have to deal with more errors. And that makes it a painful process. You might ask, why, why, why do you need to install extra adapters to make it work? A key limitation of Next.js is its unique build output format. As I understand it, it complicates efforts to easily support deployment across other hosting platforms. Instead, engineers have to reverse engineer everything, translate the Next.js build and make it work on their own systems. This creates extra work for them and this creates extra work for us, the developers, because then we will end up having to install extra adapters and change the way our app works. Netlify actually has a really good read on this and I will share the link in the description below. Also, I do want to mention that a few months ago there was a big security problem with the middleware and my understanding was that the bad communication and different implementations led to a bit of a problem when it comes to patching the security vulnerability. And just to finalize my point, some of the other frameworks out there are using Nitro build, which is kind of like uh, if they all use the same build process, it would make it a lot easier for us to deploy. I'm not going to go into more detail about Nitro build, but uh, go to their website and read a little bit more about it. I do want to mention that for most of us, hosting on a Node.js server using Docker is totally fine. The next thing that I want to talk about is Next.js doesn't scale. Next.js can definitely scale. It obviously depends on how you use it. You could break this into three, Node.js runtime, Edge runtime, and serverless. To start with, you can use Next.js as a serverless application, which gives you scalability. The only bottleneck here would be your wallet. It does look like Vasel were putting a lot of effort to make it cheaper and cost effective for everybody. And also Cloudflare are working on it as well. So we're going to have a lot more options soon and hopefully the build will be a lot easier. I haven't had the need to do this myself, but you could also scale horizontally behind a load balancer. You can also implement incremental static regeneration to numb the pain of your server or use static export if you want. Just know that a virtual private server can go with like a Postgres database can go a long way. You can always resize your server to take the more load that you need. And I don't think that Next.js can solve all of your problems. You don't need to use Next.js solely to build your full project. You can always use any other backend language of your choice or library. I mean, 
uh, to do the heavy lifting. I tried Hono recently and it was beautiful. Okay, I wanted to plug in one more question in this section that is actually pretty tough to answer. And the question is, is Next.js a full stack framework? I would say that for many small to medium applications and themes, yes, Next.js is absolutely a full stack framework. It lets you build UIs and handle server-side logic all in one place. You can do server-side rendering, you can generate pages on the fly, you have API routes, and which basically allows you to create backend endpoints and you have server actions that let you run your server-side code directly from your components. A good way to describe it might be a front-end framework with superpowers, I would say. For beginners and solo developers, it's a very friendly way to dive deep into full-stack development without the hassle of having to manage multiple projects. I can confidently say that Next.js offers full-stack capabilities straight out of the box but just keep in mind that every superhero has their limitations. For larger, complex systems, heavy backend tasks, I would say that you might need to get a dedicated backend or extra tooling, which I believe that which is fairly normal. Um, but for what Next.js is designed to do, I would say that is like a excellent middle ground for building modern web applications quickly and efficiently. I hope that answers the question. Now let's speak about the bad. The development server is slow. This is when you're developing locally. That's a fact. I assume that there is a lot that Next.js needs to process in development mode. And really, it doesn't bother me at all. I don't even notice it, but maybe I'm just so used to it. Saying this, I've seen people report super slow development server. Just make sure that you update your project and you use TurboPack and hopefully you won't have any problems. The other one is build times are slow. Personally, I experienced no issue with local build times, especially since the introduction of TurboPack. And for my mid-sized project, it has effectively half the build du duration. However, some projects do take approximately from three to six minutes to build on a shared four core, eight gigabyte RAM Hetzner server, and roughly one minute on a dedicated four virtual CPUs with 16 gigabytes of RAM, and that is using TurboPack. TurboPack offers a big speed improvement already, and I have seen some indications that there will be future optimizations and hopefully it will become even faster, but we'll see. There is also another bundler called RS Pack. I won't go into details here, but this is basically a community plugin for Next.js, which sounds awesome, but I haven't tested it myself properly, so I won't talk about it yet. The other complaint about Next.js is the too many major changes. With Next.js 15, I think that we've reached a level where we don't get too many breaking changes. I personally haven't had any major problems in the past year, but I can definitely agree that Next.js 13 was a bit rough to start with. Let's talk about the Edge middleware. The middleware defaults to using Edge runtime, which can be a pain. For those of you that are not sure what the middleware does, it basically allows you to run code before a request is completed. Then based on the uh, incoming request, you can modify the response uh, by rewriting, redirecting, modifying the request or response headers or responding directly. I do know that the Next.js team is already working on Node.js runtime. I did try it, it didn't work for me. Now, some people say that Next.js is overkill for small apps. To some degree, I agree. You don't need to use Next.js for absolutely everything. Uh, you can use React if you wish to with any backend server, but uh, I'm glad that we solved this issue. Debugging issues. I think that debugging has become a lot better with the latest updates. I have no issues here, so I'm gonna skip to the next one. And uh, for conclusion, I personally love Next.js. I will be using it for most of my projects, and at the moment it's pretty much my default option. I actually appreciate the server-side rendering and I've started using the API route quite a lot and I have no regrets so far. Having everything in one place, in one project has been great for me. And for single page applications, um, I will probably stick with Vit and maybe like something like Node.js or Hono for the backend. And that's everything from this video. Let me know what your experience is with Next.js uh, in the comments below. Like this video if you found it useful and consider subscribing to my channel.